Uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, Carlos, your number three, please. Tell it to us. Well, fittingly, my number three is going to be Desperados 3. Uh, the original game came out way back in like 2001, which is the one that me and my brother played. And it was like one of the first PC games we ever played. Um, and there was a sequel to it that came out in 2006 and another one in 2007. But both of those, we never really got into those. They were a bit too difficult and also like they lacked the charm of the original due to the... It was like the time when games were moving more to like 3D territory from strategy games. Like you used to have like sprites and 2.5 or 2D graphics. Now they were doing like full 3D and it didn't look as good as like the original. Yeah, what kind of expectations you have for the third installment then? Well, you want it to be as good as the number one? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I did, uh, maybe I didn't like give a fair chance to the second game. I mean, I didn't play it that much. I probably like tried it once and I never got back into it. But the first one is an, like an all-time classic for me and one of my like favorite older games. So I'm hoping it can like capture the uh, gameplay of the first one. Because I remember the second one, it was like, and, and by the way, this is like a real-time tactics video game in case anybody doesn't know. But the, the first one like had you, you in a bird eye view all the time. But in the second game, like you could go all the way up to like a third person view, which I didn't really like because I didn't feel like that uh, enhanced the gameplay in any way. So I like I watched some Desperados Three uh, gameplay videos, and it's looking really good. It's it's like it's a, basically it's looking like the first game, except like it's a newer game, so the graphics are like uh, more advanced, I should say. I wouldn't actually say they're even better than the first game because like if you played the first game or seen it, it it, it has sort of this isometric uh, style of graphics on 2D sprites. So it sort of looks like looks like a models, you know, like a train model or whatever you have in your... Okay. But obviously, like the Desperados, this uh, third game is looking a lot better than the second one, which also used 3D graphics. So I, I'm not really like that bothered about, uh, about the looks of the game. As long as the gameplay is like addicting like the first one, uh, I'll definitely be into it. Yeah, but Desperados is not that familiar game family to the major audience no it's, it's, it's a, a smaller game it's not like triple a advertised everywhere on tv on radio on the internet and stuff like that yeah definitely no i think it's like one of those cause I, I, I think they are i think it's like the original actually i have to check the developer of the newer one but uh the original was developed by a company called spellbound entertainment which was like a German company, and they didn't do a lot of games. They only did like a few this type of adventure games. And I don't think they really had mainstream appeal at any point. Like even when they came out, I doubt they had huge uh, like uh, gaming communities around them or whatever. And even with the uh, release of the, like the release trailer of the third game, they, it didn't like generate a lot of buzz. But I'm sure like the people who like me did play the original game are like feeling certain like nostalgic and stuff. So. And it's uh, supposed to be coming out in two months already, so not not a lot a lot of waiting should be. Uh, yeah, this is basically uh, a nostalgic trip for you to go back. Yeah, I mean, I, I've uh, I think I've played it like maybe two three years ago last time, like the original one. I had a good time with it, so it's not like only like a game that I fondly remember. It's it's still really fun to play, and if you're like a fan of sort of. Those uh, real-time tactics. I think XCOM is sort of like it, and there's the Commando series, which I never got into. But if you're a fan of like those, those types of games, you'll probably enjoy like Desperados. Yeah, quite probably. Uh, and jump into my list, and on the third place, gonna be Oddworld, Soulstorm, which is a bit of a nostalgia trip for my myself. I uh, also. Uh, because the original Oddworld, Apes or Exodus, was one of the demo games released with PlayStation 1. And the uh, first games I ever played with PlayStation. I've had a Nintendo before that, but on PlayStation, Oddworld, Apes, Exodus was one of the first games for me to play. And all I remember about it that it was quite hard 
okay, it was a demo game, so you couldn't finish the game. You could finish the demo, but it, it felt like a good platformer game in that time. And I hope in new new Soulstorm is gonna capture that good platformer game feel in because if you think about it, Carlos, when when's the last time you've played a good platformer game? Wow, that's kind of a weird because uh, not really a genre you you get to play that often nowadays. Yeah, exactly. What what happened? In platformer games. So, something I'm looking quite fondly to. If if they can create a good platformer game, that would be would be something good. And uh, 2019. The developers of this odd world soul storm informed that it was going to be on the consoles and pc in 2020 and the pc version will be epic game store exclusive and the reason behind this is that indie developers they had self-financed the game and they require additional funds in order to take this game into a triple A game they have set out to create. So that gives me a bit more hope with the Old World game that they're gonna spend that extra time, extra effort on it to make it a good platformer. And uh let's move on to your list again. Your list number two. Number two, we got uh, Amnesia Rebirth, and I just want to start out by saying like that's a terrible name for a uh, for a, a sequel. Not just that it's sort of like cliche to call it Rebirth, but because Amnesia, I know I know the first game had like I, I want to say it had like at least two sort of remakes or something, maybe just re yeah. re releases. So calling the sequel to that game Amnesia Rebirth just makes it sound it's gonna be another remake or whatever yeah it was the original game was amnesia dark descent right yeah and then it was amnesia sheen for pigs that was like the only sequel Which, to it but i think yeah. I feel like the, the first game had like a re-release or something at some point and i don't know if it was what it was called it was it did yeah but the the games were dark descent and then machine for big pigs which was shit yeah, I mean, well, the first first game is one of my like the first game came out in two thousand ten, which and it was like the first game that really got me into horror uh, video games because I was a like, long time fan of like horror movies and stuff, but I didn't play that many horror video games, and I feel like Amnesia: Dark Descent sort of was a uh, the first of its kind where like they wanted to make a non randomly like a horror survival game where you didn't go around uh, just you know blasting shit and stuff like that. I mean, I know, like, the developer that made Amnesia had, like, the Penumbra series, which I've tried, you know, like, after I finished Amnesia, which they obviously lacked the polish of, like, Amnesia, but they're all right games. And uh, then there was the... Uh, they made the... In 2015, I think they made Soma. You know that game? Which I haven't tried yet, which I ought to get into, because well, I think I'm, it has I'm, good I'm reviews. I'm not but... that into horror games myself. I I like to sleep my nights. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, the first I, I value value my dreams. The, the first oh, game was a uh, bit of a like sort of like first for me on its like, as a horror survival game, and I really enjoyed it. It's like one of my all time favorites now. I'd say like top fifty, which is saying a lot since you know you play so many games nowadays. But uh, the sequel. It, 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 I don't want to point out that the sequel didn't have the original developer either. So it was developed by another company, which obviously like lowers your expectations a bit if the original game uh, developers aren't interested in making a sequel. But it wasn't like outright bad, but compared to the first one, it's definitely a step down. And I feel like it was sort of like just yeah, but milking the success. Compare the first game and then the Dark Descent to Machine or Off Pigs. I don't know what the fuck is called anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but if if you compare the main enemy, 
even in a, you run away from fucking pigs. I mean, yeah, so again, I mean, yeah, it, it's 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 definitely it's definitely a uh, step. Like, it's not like if if, if I'd rec recommend playing uh, like yeah. Amnesia, I, w I would just like, I would be like, you know, you have to play like the sequel as well. I mean, I, I would just skip the sequel, I, I guess, at this point. I mean, it's something like if you're a really hardcore fan and you want more of it, like sure, give Machine for Pigs a try. But anyway, uh, Amnesia oh. Rebirth coming out in. There isn't a release date for this one. It just says twenty twenty later this year, maybe like fall. I'm, I'm being uh, causally optimistic. I'd be, lo I'd love to see a twenty twenty release. But considering the fact we only got like a teaser trailer or something, not that much news. I'm saying I'm probably thinking this one will go to next year. Uh, but you it, know we'll see. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. Might make actually Christmas market this year. It could. Be. I mean, one thing is like giving me hope. Virus thingamabob goes away. It will help a lot. Yeah, but and also like fuck. the fact that uh, this is the f uh, this is being developed by the original Amnesia creators, which is like fictional games. So they haven't like released a game in five years. So I I'd imagine they'd been like busy developing this one. So I can imagine that. <laughs> I kind of hope. Yeah, they have done that. They haven't because... just been sitting on their asses after Soma and doing nothing. Yeah. So. Maybe maybe like they're closer to finish than uh... enjoying the first amnesia game and then realizing that fuck we run out of money. <laughs> that could be it, yeah. Yeah, half a year. Let's build a new amnesia. What the fuck? It doesn't matter. A new coat of paint on it, and it's like new. All right, talking <laughs> about inferior <laughs> follow-ups. Let's move on to number two on your list. Ah, uh, number two on. My list is the Kerbal Space Program number two. It was announced at Gamescom 2019. The game is being developed by Star Theory and Private Division. And release date will be at some time on fiscal year 21, which begins in uh, August, September. In USA, it, it begins in September. It might make this year's release date, just like Amnesia, but it might not. It might go to 2021 also. But I kind of hope hope that they they make it this year. And to anybody who doesn't know what Kerbal Space Program is, it's basically you build rockets to shoot up in space and try to land on the moon and other planets and stuff like that uh while while you build the rockets uh you collect new parts through experience and and the missions you part participate brings you more experience and you can buy more more stuff and like that develop your spaceships further and further uh but what what is the big thing for Kerbal Space Program Two? Would be new propulsion methods, habitation modules, so you could build basically colonies on other planets, so fly away from Kerbal and find find a new colony or planet or orbital planetary colonies and stuff like that. And the best of all, saved for last. Multiplayer mode. That they are working on Kerbal Space Program Two. Didn't a multiplayer mode. The first game didn't have multiplayer. No, well, multiplayer was available through heavy modding. All right. It was possible. It didn't work good, but was kind of possible. But. It's interesting to see how they how they plan to implement uh, multiplayer. Then is it is it going to be that you're going to form a server with your friends, like one one universe in in there, or let's say one star system which you can colonize, or maybe two or three star systems you can fly to, and something like that or is it gonna be uh basically that you're gonna have one star system for 
the game. And I'm able to visit your star system. Like some of the games do right now. So basically you have your own world. But somebody is able to visit your world. Um, you know, get what I mean? Yeah, I have no idea. Cause, uh, well, for one thing, I haven't uh, played the original game. But I feel like it would lend itself to a sort of a gameplay where you would be... Uh, like so, so, sort of you'd be in the same world and you'd be like well not necessarily competing you could be working together as well for like certain goals and stuff like that all right you want to move on to the big ones top spots. hot topics top spots want to go first or should i go first i can take the first one because i have them maybe, you want you want to take it first yeah. Maybe I could take the first one because I know what your first one is. Everybody's gonna know what my first one is. So yeah, you sure you go you go ahead. Yeah. So uh, the number one for me is a sequel once again, developed by Ubisoft Toronto, and it's gonna be the third installment in the Watch Dogs series called. Legion. So the full name of the game will be Watch Dogs Legion. Third person, open world. London is the setting for this, and which is interesting. And you've played the previous ones? I've played the first one. I haven't played the second one, but I have played the first one never find any time for Watch Dogs 2, unfortunately. Maybe I should give it give it a go then. Yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed the first... I mean, I, I, I actually think cause, uh, it was a long time ago when I logged into my Uplay account after a big, big, big break. I didn't even know that I owned Watch Dogs, so I had no idea where I got that game from, but uh, I feel like I remember it being a bit of a rough uh, launch for the game. There was a lot of... Uh, Backlash considering I don't know if it was just bugs or just general gameplay of the first game. It, uh, this is something that's quite interesting. Not only that it's not based on USA or fictional USA or fictional Japan or something. It's a fictional game based in the Europe European city. How many open world games can you name? Modern day open world games at all? Oh, you're yeah. just gonna take out Assassin's Creed. Yeah. yeah. Modern day games that are based in a European setting. Open world games. Um, I wanna. That's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, especially since I'm such so late to all like new games. It's even more difficult to say. Should I just look at my library really quickly and see if I can catch up a big AAA game that would be set in Europe? Actually, no, I don't. I don't think I have. Actually, actually, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I imagine this. I mean, obviously, we haven't played know, we all the games, but uh, horribly, we might be horribly, horribly wrong. Know, they could be like <laughs> there. They could be like fifty thousand games set up yeah. there. Maybe there's somebody yeah. coming. Why are they always sitting like European and whatever settings, exotic yeah. settings? Why couldn't they be in the yeah. US? But I definitely do feel like that's kind of interesting to see. I mean, to be fair, going London, it's like that's like the that's like the easiest like uh, little step that you'd make. Like, oh, you know, we go from U- US. Where are you going? We're going to London. Like, yeah, but... draw, draw in a little color. Go in like go like you know Spain or something with it. But yeah. But what you were saying, London is quite easy target. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like but it's great still, that they go whenever they want. But... It, it's a cultural hot pot, just to say, because so many nationalities eat and mix up in London. Mm. I mean, it's, it is like sort of like a world hub, so you got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But actually, to going back to your point of asking, like, whether there are games set in like modern day. Uh, European cities, you could probably go the same route when you're talking about movies. Like every time an action movie comes out, it's always like set in US or something. Yeah, or if it's a terrorist terrorist scheme or something, the terrorists are always from Russia or China. Yeah, exactly. And you know, when you have like an alien invasion movie, they always focus on like America, and then you get like 
this one minute clips of like Paris and London getting destroyed or whatever. You're actually right. You're actually right. Now that I brought it up, why do they do that? Is it because US market is just so big? It makes them feel good about themselves. I mean, I guess it. Uh, people keep saying stuff like a lot of like American people keep saying that Hollywood is ruining movies because they're making them like for Chinese, so they add like Chinese references. Meanwhile, they're like getting these all kind of world event movies that are all somehow centered in like New York City or whatever. Like, aren't they sort of like weird? I mean, obviously, they're they're gonna be in like a U.S. city, like the setting, and then they film it in Canada, like in yeah. Vancouver or something. It's it's sort of strange, but I don't know why why they do. Maybe it's like easier to to like make all the settings. Like, if you if you're sh- shooting in North America, I guess it makes sense to make sure it's uh, takes place in there. Was it yeah, back 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 to the point? We we got off drifted quite badly there. Yeah, and telling of French people and uh, <clears throat> don't worry, I'll edit that out. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, was it possible in Watch Dogs Two play a co-op game? Now you're asking somebody who hasn't even played the first one a question about the second one. So I definitely wouldn't be able to answer that. Didn't the first uh, game offer some kind of multiplayer as well? Yeah, but it was wasn't a, it was a coup. It was like against or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. We play that together also, the Watchdog Legion, when it, whenever it comes out. When is the release date of it, by the way? Just Originally due March sixth. Already late then. Yeah, <laughs> but it has been delayed. To an unspecified date, sometime before April 2021. So we're gonna have to wait. Also, I kind of hope uh, it's gonna make its appearance on the fourth quarter of this year. Maybe Christmas. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But wait and see. On to the big one. Oh, has to be. Has to be one of the biggest releases for this year. Absolutely, it just has to. It just has to be. And that game is gonna be Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously, a game that we've all been well, all I'm saying all because this is probably like the biggest uh, hyped for a game in like a very long time. Like this is gonna this is like get into like Half Life you know, sort of stuff. Like, the only bigger game that I would imagine right now is Half-Life 3. I know we got the Half-Life VR game of uh, a month or so Alex. back, but, uh, yeah. But let's not get into that. Let's stay on uh, track here. So, Cyberpunk 277, yeah. we've been waiting, I mean, the first trailer came out in, like, 2013. To be fair, it was, like, a teaser trailer. We weren't expecting the game to come out, like, that soon. But there uh, wasn't really any new- more news in, uh, like five years since then and then then we started like getting the actual like uh, trailers with and gameplay the first alpha gameplay and stuff like that i think it was like 2018 19 so definitely like uh definitely been a long time of coming actually i've been waiting for it for like maybe two years i didn't like get into the hype train at the beginning because i was like yeah that's sure that's cool but uh yeah. And also, like the release dates, we've been. This is, I, I want to say, this like the fourth release date. Because the current release date is going to be 17th September 2020. And just a, uh, not not too long ago, it was going to be April 16th. Obviously, we passed that already. But uh, I remember there were like 2019 release dates. I, I want to say there were like a couple of them. So I'm not. I'm. I have to be quite certain that this is going to be the actual release date, 17th September, seeing that it's like the most optimal release date for a game, like, you know, getting there, fall and stuff. So, wait and yeah. see. Actually, they won a prize also this year. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, it, I, I, the, one of the funniest things, I think the game has been won in like 
like, cause, like who he, the... he... <laughs> let, let me continue a bit. Who the fuck gives out these prizes? I mean, they have won a prize for the most outstanding animated character in a commercial. <laughs> who the fuck watches commercial or animated characters and then decides that we're gonna award you a prize for your animated character? Who does that? Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what to, I mean, it's good to see the recognition. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, I, I imagine it saying it's commercial. I want to say it includes trailers. No, no, it's 18th Visual Effects Society Awards. And it's an actual... Com- Even like, yeah, but surely, like, they don't... You don't see game... Com- mer- mer- games don't have, like, commercials, do they? They, sure just, they just really, like... Uh, re-edit the trailers for commercials, don't they? So, I mean, I mean, imagine, like, the award is for, like, the trailer, not the actual uh, uh-huh. like a commercial or something. I don't know. I mean, I have to find that out, but I doubt they, like, shoot a... or, like, edit a actual commercial for a game like that. Because if it's, like, a trailer, I can understand and, like, reward it. And I'm happy for them, because uh, I think a lot of games have... No, no, no. Uh, it, it actually is a commercial. Because other nominates on that category were the winner Cyberpunk 2077, the right. second one also a game, Apex Legends. But then there is two TV series, Churchill and John Lewis. So, and this is a TV award they've won with Cyberpunk 2077. Okay. So it could be, but I'm still like, I'd imagine, maybe it's like a TV exclusive trailer, I don't know. We'll have to, I mean, I mean, who really cares? I mean, be honest here. Who the fuck has the time, really? Yeah. And, but, but the... uh, that's, that's also some, some award that the guys in the office must be so proud of winning yeah. i mean I, I, and you know and you know that's that award like they, they're gonna like when they're gonna release this game and it's gonna have like winner of this and this many awards yeah. and then when you start go looking through these awards and you see stuff like best commercial animated character or whatever so you're like really get in there like I, okay. I, hope they, I hope they put it on the box art <laughs> oh yeah the box like and it's gonna take a... <laughs> animated character in a commercial that could be but anyway the funny thing i think i've like obviously you you shouldn't put too much like weight on awards and stuff but i feel like i think it's kind of funny like seeing cyberpunk 2077 and it's one like e3's most anticipated games or whatever for like two years coming just because they haven't finished it and we're like giving them awards like yeah 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 yeah, you're doing a great great job i think that's just like surreal isn't it but uh to back to i'm gonna if i want to do something obviously this game what it's about and uh who's making it so this is gonna be and why is it so hyped uh, so it's gonna be a role-playing game, sort of like I think open city. Like you have, I think it takes place in. I mean, I I don't want to go too deep because I have to read about myself because I don't want to get spoiled about anything. Because <laughs> I want to go in like blind. I know I know some things. I know it's like set in a California and it's set on like some kind of a. I want to say it's a tabletop game, Cyberpunk or something, which this like game adapted. Or like it's set in the world of that uh, tabletop game or something, and uh, it's been developed by. In case you didn't, somebody hasn't heard of this goddamn game. It's uh, made by CD Projekt Red, who obviously made the Witcher games. Yeah, I haven't actually played any of the Witcher games. You know, not even one. Yeah, I haven't touched them. Well, to be fair, I mean, you could probably like. <laughs> there's so many people who haven't even like haven't heard of Witcher what like obviously they know they played Witcher 3 so like that's the Witcher game there's so many people probably haven't played the original too but uh especially the first one which is kind of funny since I was so late to sort of like the Witcher I mean I played the first Witcher before the third one came out and then I played the second and I never really got into the third one which is crazy considering how many people how hard people were praising it on, on online and stuff I did play it finally at the beginning of this year, and honestly, it's the greatest, probably the greatest video game I've ever played. So you should probably probably check that out. Like it's surreal how good it was. Like, how, like the expectations were so high for me, 
I was so sure I was not going to reach them, and then the fact that it was even better than I could have like expected. So much fun. Good, good waste of like two weeks straight up playing that. 15 hours a day. Don't regret it at all. Oldest I noticed that. I've been working from home <laughs> for uh, five weeks for now, and uh, it was early. Earlier weeks, it was something like a week or two. He Carlos was online on Steam, but every single time you logged on to Steam, he was playing Witcher Three: The Wild Hunt. Yeah. If if Cyberpunk comes even near like the le- level of that. Uh polishment and uh, gameplay and stuff I'll definitely be it'll definitely be in the running for one of the my favorite games of all time obviously not still yeah. don't know too much going into it yeah uh, actually the writer of the game said that the trailer for cyberpunk 2070 strikes me as a GTA skinned over with generic 80s retro future that's what he said yeah. My I mean, I mean yeah, quite honestly, I, mean, I, I don't even understand what the man is trying to say. <laughs> okay. GTA skinned over with a generic 80s retro future. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think like a lot of people, if you, if you've seen the trailer, it's it the newer trailer. I mean, obviously, it does have like sort of that GTA oh, it's flavor of it. Vinyl all over the place once again. Only, only actually, one thing. I, I, I to one the one thing that derails my hype train just a little bit. Um, during the development, it was supposed to be a third-person game with the option option of going like first person. I'd imagine for like shooting stuff and definitely driving. If it involves driving, I wouldn't mind that. Like if you wanna, you know, be be going from first person and to driving and then third person when you're like walking around, whatever. But uh, I don't know when the decision came, but evidently they went away with the third person and it's gonna be just first person now. So there's not not going to be a third person option anymore, which is something yeah. that I I am not a huge fan of because I feel like uh, third person role playing games usually have a better better uh, you know s- uh, storytelling wise I think it's better to to make it more immersive I know it sounds weird because like people say like oh the first person is the one you get the most immersed because you get to see it from the uh, character's eyes or whatnot but I don't I don't think that's true. Like in, even in Mass Effect, I feel like if it had been first person, I think that would have taken away from the game. Not. Uh, I given. might have. Yeah. I'm actually watching a gameplay video of Cyberpunk, which has been released a week ago. Quite interesting. Yeah, we'll obviously we'll probably be running some kind of background video here i hope so we have to look at our notes but uh yeah that's 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 gonna like close out my uh you have to, you have to look at your notes because you're gonna edit this yeah Maybe. obviously but uh anyway that's 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 gonna make it for my uh that's that's my top three games for this year obviously it's yeah, there are a few other games i'm you know i'm waiting for there's there's actually a couple of games that have been released already that i haven't got around to playing yet so yeah yeah, a uh, couple of games. I actually have played already the Bannerlord. That was something quite expected, although it's an early access, but I, I've had fair share of playing that. Uh, also, Final Fantasy VII, the remake, good hack and slash game. Seen a couple of videos trying to tell myself that I do not have to purchase a PlayStation 4 just to get one game. Uh, but that seems to be a losing battle I'm fighting. <laughs> I had the same dilemma back in when uh, when uh, PS3 came out. I remember just going like when uh, this, was, this was when like God of War 3 came out. I was like, uh, it was like the most beautiful game I've ever seen. Like the, the graphics were unreal at the time. And I just remember like. I think it went for only for like a year or two. I was like, I'm not gonna buy because there's literally no other game that I would be buying for like PS3. You don't want to buy like a 400 or 500 euro console just to play one game. But yeah, uh, yeah it's tough. It's tough. Those damn exclusive games. <laughs> yeah, but they're gonna release that also on PC at some time. So maybe, maybe I just wait and not jump on the hype train. 
just yet. Or then I'm gonna walk tomorrow on a shop and buy a PlayStation. Yep. But I think that's gonna do it. Once more, my list. Oddworld, Soulstorm. Number two, Kerbal Space Program 2. And number one, Watch Dogs Legion. And on to you, Carlos. Third, we got Desperados 3. Second, Amnesia Rebirth, which is a sequel, not a remake. Just, just to be clear here, so you don't make the same mistake I did when I read about it. And then first, everybody's and their mother's uh, most expected game of the last fucking decade at this point, almost Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, but that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.